Good. Now that you've taken the opportunity to watch the two videos by the great historian John Fia, who is a, a personal favorite of mine, I hope that you found the videos entertaining and informative. His office hours are spectacular, and they're an excellent idea. Those particular videos are actually quite old now. They are from 2012. But despite the fact that they are, I believe, the first two videos he had ever done for his virtual office hours, I find them to be the two of the most helpful. And in this class, we'll be watching four of his videos. We'll be watching the first two, and we'll be watching video number three and video number four near the end of the course. We'll talk about things like presentism and memory and things of that nature. Now, you notice that memory was one of the terms that we uh, had listed here today. I won't be talking about it much, but just keep it in the back of your mind because I will mention it offhand, but it will not be the key focus of our discussion. So he, here we are. We are back at this week's lecture. You can see I've also done a little touching up on this slide because I had forgotten to do that before I began recording. So now that you've watched John Fia, now that you uh, know what history is not, reflect on his uh, video and think about what history is and what historians do. And we will continue our discussion here, uh, certainly touching on a lot of what he mentioned in his videos. So we should always remember that history is not dates and names. It's not uh, just being given multiple choice tests or being forced to remember things. History is not the statues that you find lying around uh, the nation, all the nations of the world, whether they are statues of Robert E. Lee or statues of... Um, Nathan Bedford Forrest, or statues of Sojourner Truth or Frederick Douglass, statues of Louis XVI or the Marquis de Lafayette. Now, those are all wonderful things, and they certainly ha were created in history, and they're created to reference or commemorate some sort of historical person or historical event, but they themselves are not history. They are only commemorations of history. What history is, what we mean history is in this course as a profession, is the interpretation of the past based on historical evidence. So historians look at the past, they look at the archives, they look at the historical record, and they use their abilities to ask questions analyze and interrogate their source material in order to come to some kind of understanding about the past. The past itself, as John Fia notes when he was talking about the conservative radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh, that the past is not merely just the facts, although the facts are very much part of it. So let's look at it in this way. There are three main components to history, at least for this particular lecture. Uh, like I said before, I had mentioned memory at the beginning, but I'm kind of regretting doing that because it's going to become more important near the end of the course. Uh, I'll give you a rough mention of it at the very end of this lecture. But the three main components that we're going to discuss in this week, and I want you to keep in mind as we go forward, is that there are three things here at work. One is the past, one is history, and one is revision. The past, that is the names, the dates, the events, the people, or what we would call perhaps the raw material of history. So think of history as like a, a housing project, a construction project, uh, some sort of thing where you have to, uh, if, if we have any engineers in the class, I don't know if we do, but if we have any engineers in the class, something that needs to be built. The past is the nuts and bolts that hold everything together. You can't build a bridge without nuts and bolts. You can think about interesting bridge designs and architectural designs uh, to the cows come home, but it means nothing if you don't have the wood, the iron, the bolts, the steel, the cables, and the manpower to put it all together. So the past are those raw materials. History, on the other hand, is an interpretation of those, those raw materials, those pieces of evidence. And it's done using historical evidence, mainly primary sources, which we'll get into in a moment. 
historians, as John Fee, I believe, recall notes, historians are interested not necessarily in what has happened, but why it happened and what its overall importance is and its impact. So historians are attempting to bring context and importance to events because without historians doing that, then the history really is, or I should say the past, the historical record, time, is simply just one damn thing after the other. It would just be a battle and a battle and a battle and a death and a murder and a birth and, a and so on and so forth and all of these different things. Historians try to bring a certain degree of structure and understanding of the past for various reasons and purposes, which we'll discuss at the end of the end of the uh, semester in greater detail. But for right now, they are interested in that why, and also maybe the how, and its overall arching importance. And they do this by revising history. Revision, as you can see here, is the act of examining and re-examining the past and historical sources, trying to look at it in different ways and with fresh eyes to gain a different perspective. So if history was, say, always conducted by upper class white men, despite their best efforts, it will always be written by upper class white men. Now, that's not, nothing wrong with being upper class white male. I'm not upper class, but I am a white male. But historical perspective comes from different types of people looking at different sources and different types of people looking at the same source, trying to grapple with that evidence, trying to understand it. It is what some people have referred to as a conversation among scholars, and not just scholars who are alive today like me and you. You as a historian and me as a historian might see things differently, and we can converse about it. Literally, we can converse about it, but we can write about it. But it's also a conversation between historians of today and historians who have long since passed away, have departed this world, looking at how they looked at the world, looking at how we look at the world, trying to find the reasons why they looked at it that way and how they looked at it that way. It's complicated. And like I said, don't worry, I'm not going to make this into a graduate level course or a history major course for you. I simply want you to understand the method behind this, because as we move forward in this course, we're going to be examining primary sources and we're going to be drawing our own analytical conclusions. You will be doing this stuff on a much, much smaller scale, but you will still be doing this stuff. So I'm trying to give you a basis for understanding that. And I hope that this will be important uh, for you as we move forward. So we're going to end this particular video now. I want you to take a pause, maybe, you know, get a snack or something, relax. You can pace yourself as much as you want, go right through it, or you can just take a break. As long as you hit those deadlines, it's fine. Take a break and we'll get back and we'll talk about exactly what historians do. And then we will uh, discuss that topic, dis discuss some methods, and then eventually wrap up this lecture. So take a break and we'll be right back.